Good evening and welcome to Tinkering with Etkelar. During my apprenticeship in the early 90s, I was already coding Intel Assembler and Pascal in DOS. Still, I fell in love with that nifty little Z80 based experiment computer board we had at school. It's called a microprocessor, model number MPF1, revision B in my case. I got very lucky at an eBay auction. The package was pretty much complete. The original box, all the manuals, power brick and even the warranty card. Wow, I did not quite expect that from the pictures in the auction. They looked okay, but this is close to pristine. I was a bit saddened. Nothing to restore here. Just some very light cleaning and a bit of contact spray for the socketed ICs and keys. The only thing that was a bit worn was the red display cover. Somebody must have been pointing to the address part with their pointy fingernails quite often. I tried some polishing paste and also toothpaste to get the marks out. Didn't quite get them all, but it's very close and much better than before. So, power on? Ah, yes, just like I remember it. Now where did I put that... Um, ah, got it! The big project we had back in the day was a traffic light control routine. The 16-bit general I.O. would be connected to 16 LEDs to represent an intersection. Red, yellow and green for the cars and two pedestrian lights without yellow. Let's see if the EEPROM still works. <laughs> the sticker came off quite some time ago. Hmm, it seems that it's stuck somewhere. Why is it showing fail in the display? I read the ROM with a universal programmer and disassembled it. And as I tried to remember my code, it hit me. I did include an option to switch between normal and emergency, aka fail mode. Fail mode would just blink the yellow lights. That was what got me the plus in the A plus back in the day. <laughs> Finding out what pin maps to which light was a bit of a trial and error. A simple on off signal doesn't have a color after all. Eventually I had it and here is the result. Neat, but um, let's dig a bit deeper. The MPF1 has a socket for a Z80 CTC, a programmable timer. It was an optional feature, but I have one of these in my stash. The experiment manual that came with the board has a simple clock program that goes with it. Well, here goes nothing. E318 ED. It needed some debugging, but after fixing a typo, it worked. Nice! The clock isn't all that accurate, but it shows that my CTC works and that the CPU can handle interrupts. But now I want to keep that program. Hmm, oh yes, I have that dictaphone from last year. Connecting it to the audio jacks on the MPF1 and reading up on the tape write button was easy. <laughs> large storage. And some screeching later, I had a recording. A 
went back to troubleshooting. Try as I might, the recording didn't read back into the MPF1. The good side, this computer comes with a full set of schematics. You can see here that the audio input is passed through a resistor to limit the current draw and then clamped with diodes to the 5V and ground rails. So what comes out of the tape is converted into a square-ish wave. That signal is then fed into an inverter with a Schmidt trigger input to turn it into a proper signal. And here was the problem. The audio input after the clamping didn't go low enough to make the inverter see a low. After a bit of research, asking around for ideas and some trial and error later, I had a filter cap in line to remove any DC offset from the tape output and a pull down resistor after that to make sure the inverter input really goes low. And ta-da! I can read my program back in and the clock still works. The only thing that's keeping me from poking and prodding at this thing is the hex code input. Hmm. I found an up-to-date Z80 assembler that runs on Linux and produces binary output. Nice! Trying some blink code first. Now I have the binary. But how do I get it across? Hmm. Oh! Let's read up on the format of the tape audio and create a program on my PC that turns the binary file into a WAV file. The MPF1 also comes with the complete monitor source code for your convenience. And here we go. Loading my Blinky program back into the board and running it. Nice! To top it off, I wrote a bit of code to control an LED matrix. I had tried that module with my Arduino before, so I knew what commands to send. Hmm, it just plays dead. That's strange. The LEDs on the output pins show activity and the oscilloscope shows plausible waveforms for all three control pins too. Since I pretty much copied the bit banging code, I'm pretty sure there is no error in the commands. My first bet was a timing problem. Let's pull up the datasheet for the matrix control chip. It is a MAX7219, or at least a clone. The data transfer is basically done by pushing bits out with a clock signal and then, when all the bits are sent, toggle the load line high for a moment. That way you can cascade as many of these as you like. You just have to keep track of how many bits you sent before loading them. I suspected the load signal was too quick after the last clock. But the time between clock high and load is given as 0 nanoseconds. So can't really be too fast. But there's also a TDS value. Time between data bit set and clock signal and that is 25 nanoseconds. When I was bit banging with the Arduino, the digital write commands were done one after the other, so there was enough time. Here I set all the bits at once, and zero is less than 25 nanoseconds indeed. I changed the code to first push the data bit and then pulse the clock. And here we go! I knew that the MPF1 has BASIC support too. Yes, 7 segment hex keyboard BASIC programming. I tried to find the ROM dump but couldn't. Turns out that the B revision has it built into the monitor chip, which is a 4 kilobyte rather than the original 2 kilobyte. Neat! But I doubt I'll be doing much with that.
so, this was a brief overview and some small getting into gear projects for the Microprofessor MPF1. It was made by Multitech, by the way. That company is still around, but has since rebranded to Acer. I hope you enjoyed this rather special episode. See you next time! But I kind of fell in love with that nifty little experiment computer board we had to teach us the basics of computer programming. <clears throat> that sentence is way too long, how can I shorten that?